Hey guys, and welcome to Biology 1, Unit 9.1. In this first podcast of this unit, we're going to be talking about um, plant phylogeny. And if you remember, phylogeny was the evolutionary history of how organisms um, evolved. And so in this podcast, we're going to be looking at where plants came from and the different divisions that they belong to. So the early ancestors to plants um, were thought to be all aquatic. And so we had to make this jump from aquatic to terrestrial life. And so the first ancestors of plants were these photosynthetic green algae. So these green algae, they're kind of like plants. They're almost like plants. They have chlorophyll, they have cell walls, but they're not quite plants. They don't have all the characteristics of plants and they are aquatic. And so this is probably, these are present day proteins that probably look a lot like what the early ancestors of plants look like. Some of these basic uh, protestin green algaes. And so there's quite a few similarities. They both contain chlorophyll. They both have chloroplasts with those stacks called thylakoids. They both, both store starch in the same way. And they both have cell walls that are made of the same thing. And they both go through this, uh, this process called alternation of generations, which I'll show you here on this next slide. But there's enough differences that plants are considered to be their own kingdom, mainly in the way they reproduce. So alternation of generations, just two words here that, you, that we'll mention, gametophyte and sporophyte. So the sporophyte is 2N or diploid. And if you remember from when we were talking about DNA, our diploid number of, as humans is twenty is uh, 46, whereas the gametophyte is haploid. And it's, if we're talking about humans once again, our haploid number is 23. And so plants just kind of alternate between these sex cells, the pollen or the ovules that are haploid, and the diploid stage, which for most plants is the large mature form that you see. So living in aquatic environments presents some different challenges as opposed to living on terrestrial land environments like pl most plants do now. When they're surrounded by water, the plants don't dry out. Um, as far as reproduction, the sperm have flagella, so they're able to swim to the egg. And they don't need a whole lot of support because water tends to be pretty buoyant and can support the plant pretty good. And since if plants can float, they're able to stay in that upper surface near the light. And any water, uh, any nutrients that they need can be gotten directly from the water. So all of these are challenges that plants had to overcome to move from water onto the land. And so because of that, if, since you need minerals and gravity and all this stuff, all those problems, the solutions, plants have to have roots to help absorb water and minerals. They have to have a stronger cell wall and better structure to help them fight against the effects of gravity and increase their height. They need vascular transport systems to get water up to that higher level. And to keep them from drying out, they need to have that waxy guard uh, coating on the outside with um, these things called guard cells. In reproduction, since the sperm aren't able to swim with the flagella, then they need pollen and seeds. Okay, now plants are there's a lot of differences between plants, but they're all alike in the fact that they have, that they're multicellular, they're all autotrophic, which remember that means they make their own food through photosynthesis. They all have chlorophyll, which is how they capture sunlight energy. They all have cell walls made of cellulose, and they all store food as, as starch. But there are some differences. So there's four main divisions of plants that we're going to uh, briefly talk about. And you can see they're broken down here into bryophytes, which are mosses, um, pteridophytes, which are ferns, gymnosperms, and angiosperms. And if you remember how to read one of these cladograms, you can see that ancestral down here, so the first thing, colonization of land. So everything from here up is on land. And then everything from here up has a vascular system. So the mosses don't have a vascular system. Everything from here up has pollen, so the ferns and the mosses don't have pollen and seeds. And everything from here up 
has flowers. So the conifers, the ferns, and the mosses don't have flowers. Here's a little more simplified version of the cladogram that you can see with the mosses, ferns, pines, and flowering plants, and what they got along the way. So remember, everything from here up has a vascular system, everything from here up has seeds, and everything from here up has flowers. So the first land plants, let's look at, we're gonna briefly run through the, the four of these different divisions. The mosses, they're non-vascular, so since they don't have a way to transport water, they have to be real small because they can't be more than a couple inches tall because they don't have any way of getting water up to a higher level. They still have swimming sperm that have flagella. So if they have swimming sperm, what type of environment do you think they're probably gonna live in? That's right, they have to live in a pretty moist environment. Um, they have this life cycle that their dominant form is actually haploid. It's kind of weird to think about that, but when you see that this, what you actually see with moss is actually their haploid stage. And they don't have seeds, they have spores. Um, we're going to talk more about this in the third podcast of this unit, but I wanted to briefly introduce it at least, that vascular system is made up of two parts, xylem and phloem. The xylem is what carries the water, and the phloem is what carries the sugar. So in general, xylem water up, takes water from the roots up to the leaves where it's needed, and phloem food down. So it takes the, the food, the sugar, that's made up in the leaves and takes it down to the roots or the stem to where it's stored. And so when we think of sap in a, in a plant, generally what we're thinking about is that xylem or that phloem. And if you think about vascular tissue in plants, it's a lot like the arteries and veins in our body. It carries minerals and nutrients from point A to point B in that plant, just like our veins and arteries do for us. So here's a few pictures of some of these mosses, some of these non-vascular plants, and like you can see, most of them are pretty small and kind of sponge-like because they have to soak up water. And here's some more, some of these peat bogs that cover large amounts of uh, like Northern Ireland and stuff. Okay, the second division, the ferns, they're vascular plants. They're seedless vascular plants. So they have vascular tissue, which allows them to be a little bit taller because they can transport that water up to their leaves, but they still have some of these swimming sperm. So once again, where must they live? That's right, they must live in pretty moist environments too because the sperm have to swim to, their, uh, to the eggs. And they don't have seeds though. They still have these, these things called spores. So here's a few pictures of some ferns. And here's some uh, larger ones. Some of them can get to be pretty large, almost tree-like, because they do have that vascular tissue. Okay, number three, the gymnosperms or conifer. Um, that prefix gymno means naked or exposed. And then sperm means seed. And so the gymnosperm, or gymnosperm means naked seed because that seed isn't enclosed inside of a fruit. It just kind of hangs out in the open. Um, so they have vascular tissue, they have seeds, they have pollen, which is uh, basically a plant where the plant sperm is uh, stored. So since the, the, the sperm don't have to swim through water anymore, they can fly through the air they can live in places that aren't as, as damp. And some of the, the largest trees on earth, some of the oldest trees on earth, these uh, gymnosperms make up a, a wide variety of different types of plants on earth. And here's some of the pictures of some of the different cones that go along with those. So pollen was a, was a pretty good invention. Um, by, by allowing plants not to have flagellated sperm, not to have that swimming sperm, it allowed them to live in places that didn't require as much water, didn't require water for fertilization. So that opened up a lot more areas of land that could be colonized by gymnosperms. And then finally, the first flowering plants, angiosperms, uh, means flowering plant. And they have vascular tissue, so they can be tall. They have different types of male and female uh, gametes, so they have separate sperm and egg cells. And these are flowering plants. 
then if it flowers, that means it makes fruit. And so rather than the, the gymnosperms, which had naked seeds, the angiosperms, their seeds are enclosed in some inside of some sort of fruit. And so here's most of what we think of now, um, as far as a plant, are angiosperms. They're by far the most successful of the, the four divisions of the plants now. And so lots of different fruits. If it has a fruit, it's an angiosperm. And that seed, by having that seed, um, like gymnosperms and angiosperms do, it provides a lot of that protection. Um, a little vocabulary term here, cotyledon, you can see right here, it's the first true leaves of a, of a seed, of a new plant. And there's one more division that we can look at, depending on how many leaves that seed has. We can divide angiosperm into two different classes, dicots and monocots. Di means two, mono means one. And so that just means that when you look at that first little seed leaf, dicots have two and monocots have one. And you can tell some other differences too. If you look at a, a leaf, it kind of has this branching pattern. It's a dicot. If it has parallel veins, like a blade of grass or like a palm tree, then it's a, it's a monocot. And so those are just two of the big divisions that angiosperms get divided into. Okay, so review this information, and if you have any questions, make sure you write them down and we'll go over them in class.